How's it going everybody? Resale Rabbit here. So this video is going to be very different from all my other videos. I'm going to show you how to rewire a lamp. Now, if you're here because you want to learn how to rewire a lamp, this may seem a little bit weird. I'm talking about reselling things and profit and whatnot. And if you look at my other videos, they're very different than what you would expect from a video about how to rewire a lamp. Anyways, this is a resale channel. We buy stuff and we sell it for a profit. So this video is gonna show you how to rewire a lamp so you can sell it for a profit. Look at this cool little fire hazard. This is a really cool looking lamp. Let's go down to the bottom here. I actually got this in a delinquent storage unit and I am going to rewire it. Now, for those of you who are here for resale purposes, this is a great way to make a little bit of money. You can get a lamp like this fairly cheap. Look at this, wires sticking out. Nobody wants to buy this lamp. You could probably find something like this for under 10 bucks. In my case, like I said, it came out of a storage unit. So I paid like $2,000 for it and I got a whole bunch of other crap. Anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewire this lamp. And once it's rewired, it's worth quite a bit more money. It's simply because then it's not going to electrocute you and then burn your house down. Um, now, me personally, again, for those of you who follow the channel, I'm preparing for a lot of viewers who just want to learn how to rewire a lamp, not resellers. So that's why I keep saying that. Anyways, for those of you who do follow the channel, it's not really worth my time personally, the way my business is run, to be buying broken lamps and rewire them. I would ra I'd rather be the guy who sells that lamp for five bucks and then move on to the next thing and someone else can make some money on it. However, I really like this lamp. I wanna put it in my house. I don't wanna burn my house down and I really don't wanna electrocute myself. So I'm gonna show you how to rewire a lamp and then I'm gonna take it home and put it in my house. So one more quick look here. This lamp is old. Although it's not as old as you, oh, look at that. Do you really wanna be plugging that in? That is, so anyways, is not as old as I would have thought just looking at it because I can tell it doesn't have a braided cord, but I do see this. I want no part of this. And then of course the wires sticking out and everything. Now this piece we're probably just gonna throw away. I don't know if that's savable, maybe, but it's not, you know, this is just part of a, Gonna stick your finger in there was plugged in this is just part of the lamp socket i guess you would say so we're going to take this apart it's actually very simple and it won't take very long but first we're going to take a trip to the hardware store if you live in the midwest we're going to go and save some big money so aside from the obvious fire hazard of this of this i found some other things this cord was just tied in a knot it is dry rotting pretty bad look at that it's cracking if i bend it it's just gonna crack some more and expose the wires if this were plugged in and i was bending it i would look like the cat from christmas vacation so like you can see the cord just comes right through here so we're gonna want to find a cord that is gonna be aesthetically pleasing it's gonna look nice you know in here because you will be able to see it we're gonna to wanna to measure this out and I'm just gonna kind of rough it because it doesn't really matter that much. This thing is gonna be plugged in in my house fairly close to an outlet. So I only need you know, three or four feet off the end here despite how long this is. But we wanna measure the height of this as well as the length, I guess. The entire path that the cord will follow from the outlet to the end is what you're gonna to wanna to measure. In this case, we're about, and like I said, you can just rough it, we're about five feet tall to, well, to here. Another 12 to 15 inches there, so say six feet, add another three or four feet. So we're gonna need about 10 feet or so of cord. Now, I don't know if they have 10 foot cords. If they've got a 15 foot cord though, we can always cut it down because the cord is just gonna have ends like that. We're also going to need to buy a receptacle. I guess you would call it a socket. I don't know, the part that the, the light bulb is actually going to screw into. And lastly, I'm in debate if I wanna put a shade on this. I think it'd be cool if I got like a bigger Edison style bulb and hung it from it. So if you were going to put a shade on it, you would need to buy a lamp harp, which is the thing that goes around here. Let me show you on another lamp. So here is another unique lamp from the same source. 
You can see this one definitely needs to be rewired too. At least you don't have that. Uh, don't know what this is supposed to be. Anyways, so the harp is this part that goes up over it. If the lamp doesn't have it, you're gonna need to get one of these. Sometimes it's cheaper just to harvest it from another lamp. You're also going to need this piece, which is what the harp actually attaches to. This is a bad example. This harp, okay, maybe it's a really bad example. Normally there's a little rivet, rivet's probably the bad word, a little ring that sits over the edge here. You lift it up and then you're able to squeeze it and lift it right out. The next thing you're gonna want, again, if your lamp doesn't have it, is a finial, which is this little thing that screws onto the top and holds the lampshade down, basically. And this is not liking the focus here. Um, the finial is something that you can really get to fit the style of the lamp. So you're gonna really wanna kinda of pick out something that looks aesthetically pleasing to you and matches the lamp. The harp, on the other hand, they're pretty much all the same. The only things you really wanna look for is the color. Usually they're brass, sometimes they're going to be silver in color, or if it's really old like this, rust. And the height, that's the other thing, the height, and that just kinda of depends on the lampshade you choose. There are other ways to hold a lampshade on though. Here's another lampshade. Notice there isn't a little tiny hole for the screw to go through, and the finial, you wouldn't even see it. How this one works is you just put this right over the socket and put the bulb over it and the bulb itself holds it on. If you're going with this type of lampshade, uh, I guess lampshades have a maximum wattage. If you're going with this type of lampshade, you're going to want to, or you're not really gonna need to get anything else. This will just rest right on it and you put the bulb on. This here is what you would see on the top of the lampshade if you are using a harp. But in a similar fashion to the other one, you've got this weird thing. This actually clips onto the bulb. I'm not sure if they make these anymore, uh, but if you're using a vintage lampshade, once again, you don't really need to do anything because that will clip right onto the bulb. All right, so let's go to the store and find some stuff. You're probably gonna be able to go to any hardware store. I'm going to Menards because I live in the Midwest, in the heartland, in the best part of America, between June and August. And um, yeah, that. That's about all I have to say, but you could probably go to any local hardware store, Lowe's, The Home Depot, Ace Hardware, True Value, pretty much any hardware store is going to have this stuff, or you could buy it online like a chump or a smart person who plans ahead. I didn't plan ahead, so I'm going to the store to get the stuff because I didn't plan ahead. Boy, did I have a heck of a time finding this. So it's in the lighting section if you're at Menards. Look for like these extra globes and shades and whatnot. But here's what we're looking at. This is an example of a lamp harp. See these two little things down here? That's what I was talking about. You lift up and you can squeeze it out. This is your whole kit to make a lamp. You can make it out of a jar or an old fire extinguisher or whatever you want. It's $7.99. Uh, this is not what we need though, because I don't need a harp. So we would be looking for something more like this. Also $7.99, we're gonna have the wire, which is uh, only eight feet though. So this is more for a table lamp. So there might not be a kit that would work for me. So in which case, now I'm gonna look for something like this, just the wire. See, it's got a plug on one end. That's only eight foot though. Eight, eight. There we go, 25 foot. So these ones here, it looks like it's just the wire. I don't see the other end of it, but I also don't see a plug. There it is. So these are just the wire. They are 25 feet long. This is a 15 footer and it's got the plug. I think I might go with this. The gold should look nice with the with what I've got. Alternatively, I'd like to go clear, but eight feet just isn't gonna be enough. So I'm going with this 15 foot one thing to consider is you probably have more color options online. Now this, 550. Just looking around to see if there are any other options. So if you're trying to go with a retro look, there are also braided ones here. That'd be kind of cool, but there are only eight footers. Yeah, they're all eight foot, but you've got the old braided ones if you're going with a really old school lamp and you want that look. Now the next thing we need, and I haven't looked for that yet, we're gonna need a socket. 
So you can see there are a lot of options with sockets. We've got this one where it's a twist, but it's on the back. We've got these where you're pushing the switch through. We've got these ones where you turn the switch. You can kind of choose, you got a pull chain. You can kind of choose what you want here. I kind of like this one, the pull chain. That's kind of neat. Although I'm not sure if that would cause problems, how sturdy the lamp is. I think I might go with that. But we've got also three-way, if you want to put a dimmer on it. Uh, what else? Two-circuit, whatever that means. Uh, we've got, wow, Bakelite socket. There, now we're focused on there. Uh, we've got porcelain sockets over here. So you've got a lot of options. But what you're probably going to want is just one of these. I think I'm going to go with this. Gold will kind of match it. The alternative is black. And since we're just going to do an exposed bulb, we're going to probably want to go with gold here um snap in that's probably if you're just replacing an easy socket you've got these collars or rings for if you've got upside down shades um you know similar to the picture there where they're hanging upside down wow i cannot focus today there you go they even have crystal prisms and whatnot in certain circumstances you might want some of these threaded pipes to run up through the thing, but most lamps that you're rewiring are already gonna have it. Looks like this is kind of a built-in solution. I don't know if you would make a lamp out of this. This would be more if you just wanted to hang an ornate bulb. We've got swag. You want some swag right there. But see what I mean how there are different size lamp harps here? It just depends on the size of the shade. So I think that's about all we're gonna need. And this was, I don't remember which one I grabbed, the pull chain, $3.28. So combined, I think this was $5.50, $3.28. So about nine bucks here. You do have other options. You can get cool shades for it and whatnot. But we're gonna go with this, and then we're gonna go find a light bulb. So now I'm kind of looking at this and wondering if I wanna have one of these hanging down. That might be kind of neat. Let's see what they got for light bulbs first. Let me tell you something. Sitting in that area under all of the lights, it's really hot. All right, I think I walked past all of the light bulbs, so let's find one. So we've got some options here. We can go with like an Edison style bulb. Uh, that's kind of neat, but that's not gonna work in this lamp. Ooh, what's this? Fireworks bulb? Hmm. We got big ones here too. Those are gonna be a little expensive though. I don't know if I wanna do that. Maybe some, this is kind of neat. Five bucks. I think I might go with this. So it's not coming up very well in video, but that's the one that I want to go with. And that is going to be, where did I just see it? Right here. And this one, 40 watt replacement. Is that equivalent or is it actually 40 watts? Yeah, it uses six and a half watt. So that is what we're going to go with. Kind of a neat look. There's another swivel one up here, but I kind of like the look of the long bulb here. And it's about 10 bucks. Kind of a neat little display they have. I like that long one up there, but eh. I do kind of like that display. So that gives you an idea. I really like the big one. That's down here. We got a $20 and a $25 one. Maybe I should go with that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I go with the big one or the little one? That's the difference in size. That might not be actual size because those look pretty comparable. Ooh, those are neat. I'm not gonna do one of those, but they're neat. I think I'll stick with this one for now. I can come back and get one of those if I decide I'd rather that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So, I decided to go with the little one. I feel like if I did the big one, it would just distract from the light fixture itself. And the light fixture is what's cool. And my hat is crooked. And my hands are full, so I can't fix it. But that's kind of gonna be my go-to here. We don't wanna distract from the fixture itself. So, the total was exactly when the lamp was made, 1958. I don't know that's when it was made. I thought it would be funny. It wasn't. So now let's go put this crap on the lamp. Now the first thing we wanna do is up here, We'll pull, oh, lost something. We're pulling this off. Now, normally the wires are actually gonna be wired in, 
so you don't need to just rip it off you'll have to actually you know take some screws out should be pretty easy to figure out just looking at it now we're gonna look at the bottom normally there's a little nut down here mine doesn't have that so what we're gonna want to do is try twisting to actually unscrew this from the base And it doesn't look like that's working. So in this case, I think it's rusted on. So we're able to just pull that through. First, we're gonna come up here. Mine's gonna be a little bit different than yours because mine, you can see it's all kind of like woven in here. So we wanna pay attention how it goes behind that and then in front and then behind, how it runs through. We're gonna try and just pull the wires through. So we're fishing it through here. This might actually unscrew. Grab some pliers. So a lot of this is just kind of looking at how this is put together. So this unscrews. And then you pull that off. And then the wire, we're just going to fish through here. And from there, we can pull it right out. So now, now we're gonna wanna discard this little fire hazard one thing that I like to do, just cut the end off. And the reason is I'm recycling this. I don't want someone to try and use this. I doubt someone will, but now that can get recycled. Now we we'll go into our goodie bag and we've got this. So we're gonna take this wire and basically fish it right back through same way so it's fairly easy you've actually got a plug on one end so it doesn't really matter you know, there's no special way to do it we're just going to fish it right in through here it should go all the way up to the top we'll just push it through now in some cases you'll actually have to take the lamp face off and that's not gonna be that big of a deal. Sometimes you might actually fish it through the end here and then pull it up through the lamp base and then fish it up through the, the stem of the lamp. So all we're doing is just pushing this up. So I got caught, I couldn't push it up any further. So I just started rotating this, most lamps you just rotate them. And it took a little force at first because this probably hasn't been taken apart in a hundred years. And you can see how things are lifting off like that. So I'm going to keep spinning this. It's just threaded on until it comes off. Now, one thing I noticed, you got one piece here, which attaches to this and then this but inside this whole thing is one pipe and it's likely, there you go, it's threaded right here. This is the threads we saw underneath the base here. So that's one solid pipe that runs all the way up. So I'm gonna try and detach this, which might take a little elbow grease. That way I've just got a pipe to run it through. So I'm noticing now, no matter how much I fidget, I can't get any more in. So I'm gonna pull it out. And notice I kept my finger on it, run it in line here. Right here is where it's getting stuck. So right before this little rust mark. So I got myself a wire hanger. I'm gonna stick that in and see if that goes through. It's a little bit more rigid. I might need to straighten that out a little more. It's a little more rigid. So we'll have a little bit more, maybe there's something caught in it and we can push it through. I don't know, we'll find out. So I got it through and I realized, or almost through, and I realized I made a mistake. <clears throat> These gold pieces that go over the pipe, I didn't have them attached. 
And because the cord's here, the only way to attach them is before the cord. So I had to pull it all the way out. I did get it past the stuck spot, but I had to pull it all the way out and do it again. And with a little persuasion, I got it out. So now I'm just gonna pull it through, give myself plenty of slack. And we are going to do the, this little weave that it did before. Now obviously this is because this is a more decorative end where the cord is exposed. We need to do this, but if you if your cord is already like inside of it, you don't need to do anything fancy like this. There we go. Now it looks the gold actually doesn't look too bad. You barely even notice it. So now it's time to wire it in. So we're gonna grab this lamp socket. So with this lamp socket, it's got this little threading inside, and you see there's no place for it to thread. So I was gonna grab this, but this it'll thread on there, but that's actually what's supposed to thread on here. So that's a problem. Then I took a look at the old one. I actually do need part of this. So I'm going to have to, this might be a little bit difficult. Looks like there's a little nut in there, which if I am able to remove, this plastic's kind of in the way. So basically I need the bottom part of this. If you look at this, it's actually the same thing. It looks like it might've been painted at some point. It's just missing that little set screw. So this little collar is what I need. The collar and then the little ball that's inside of it, which actually allows you to adjust the light. So I'm back at Menards. All I really need is something, I have this in a bag because it's covered in WD-40, but with this threading on both sides, in hindsight, I probably could have harvested this off of another lamp, but this is what I need, but shorter, and I'd rather not cut it. Let's see if they have the right part, otherwise, I'm gonna have to take it off of another lamp. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing one. This one's a little shorter, but I need it a lot shorter. Now the only thing about this one is it's on a little ball, so it will actually rotate and you can angle it different ways. But for this lamp, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm not seeing the part. So I might need to harvest it off of another lamp. On these lamp kits, there actually is one right there. That's the part that I need. So I'm just kind of looking around to see if they have one. I could pay eight bucks for that and just have some extra parts, but I'd rather not. What I will likely do if I don't find one, here's a super long one, it's 30 inch. Um, if I don't find the part, I'll probably just, I've got some junk lamps back there at the warehouse. I might try to pull it off of one of those. Here's something kind of nice. I didn't realize they made these. It's to reattach two long pieces. A lot of times your floor lamps, these are busted and they're all wobbly and weird. 89 cents if you need one. So they've got these, multiple different sizes, it's a buck 99 for the whole thing. I'm thinking this is what I'll go with. It doesn't have that little thing, but I don't think that's really a big deal. I think this should suffice. Here's another thing, you can make it a touch lamp. Uh, Technology Connections did a video on how to do this, so I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but for $7.35, you turn your lamp into a touch lamp. All right, I think I'm gonna go with this. It's two bucks. Um, oh, I better make sure I've got the right size. I think that one's a little bigger. I think this is it. Uh, so I'm gonna check it on what I have. Now, I probably could harvest it off of another lamp, but for two bucks, I'd rather just make sure I have the thing. And then I've got extras if I ever need them. I'm thinking it's the second size that's gonna work best for me. And yes, it's silver, it doesn't match the gold. However, it's 
you know, you're not gonna see it, it's gonna be inside the lamp. So I'm thinking this is gonna be the way to go. So that's the socket I bought yesterday and it says 1 8th. These are also 1 8th. So I was gonna open it and try to fit it on, but I just read it and it fits. I'm gonna open it and try it anyways, but I'm like 99% sure that this is what I'll need. And it fits like a charm. So we're gonna grab this two bucks later and I'll meet you at the warehouse. So here's what I was doing. After spraying a ton of WD-40 and that not working, I started cutting this off and it still didn't work. What made it difficult is this piece, how it's detached. It's on a little ball joint. My guess is with that, it was so you could angle the light. It probably had some sort of uh, shade on it so you could point it in different directions. I could not get this off. Now, I probably could have harvested this part off of another lamp. This will suffice though. It'll do the job. This is the difference between this video and watching the pros do a tutorial because when they do it, everything is ideal and works perfectly. In the real world, that's not the case. So let's get this attached. So what we're gonna wanna do is run the cord through it. I've got way too much cord here. And screw it in. And actually looking at this, I might wanna grab the shorter one. This might be too long. Um, because this is going to sit like this and you'll actually end up seeing some of that. So let me take this off and we'll grab, actually it might be right in my pocket here. There's one a little bit shorter. We'll go with that one. I wish there was something a little in between, but this will suffice. Now, at this point, we're gonna attach this. What you would normally do, if you're putting a harp on it, you're gonna wanna put the harp on before this part. But since we're not putting a harp on here, we're good to go. This screw right on. And then, we've got this little set screw here. We'll just tighten that. and that's gonna hold it in place. Now, I'm gonna pull this out, and it is time, oh, that's being stubborn, there we go, it's time to wire it on. Now, we're gonna have a brief electrical lesson in polarity. This is how electrical circuits work in the US. You see how there's two wires here? I'm gonna give you the simplified version. One of these wires is hot, and the other one is not, or neutral now this is specifically in the u.s other countries you know in england they'll sip on their tea and crumpets and probably do it differently in canada they make friends with polar bears they drink maple syrup like it's coffee and they use the word sorry as an insult here in the u.s is different polarity so how do you tell which of these wires is hot and which one is not well it's simple the hot wire is going to have a little ribbed edge I don't know how well this is going to show up on video. Yeah, I can't get that to focus. But if you feel the outside of this one is smooth and the outside of that one is rough, it's got like a line going down it. Now, if you look at the packaging, the ribbed wire is the neutral wire. You want to look at your packaging. This is the rule of thumb, but in other countries, it might be a little bit different. Um, or a lot different. I don't know how it works in other countries. In Australia, everyone's upside down. So, because they're on the bottom of the earth. So maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. But you also want to check your packaging in case you've got some weird thing that's the other way around or something. But in this case, the neutral is the ribbed wire. Now, when we look at this, you're going to see two screws. You're going to see there is a brass, right there, a brass screw and a silver screw. The silver screw is going to be your neutral your brass is going to be your hot. So the next thing we need to do, we need to tie an underwriter's knot. There's a little diagram on here. It should be on the back. This is the socket. 
should be on the back of all of them. You want to tie it just like that. If you don't see it, you can easily Google it or just look at this picture. So I'll explain the knot in a minute, but you're just going to pull it nice and tight and then pull that up and pull out the extra slack. And then you can pull that out from the bottom of the lamp. Next, we're going to screw these on. So you want to feel the rib side. Now, one thing that's important is where they connected, there's going to be a rib just because of the glue that held them together. So one is going to now have one rib. The other one's going to have two. So you want to feel for that. And the reason this is important, you know, you can easily... Boy, they both are close because of that pulling that apart. Now, the reason this is important is because if you do it the opposite direction, you can actually, it'll still work, but it can actually ground out, meaning you can electrocute yourself. Remember, the goal of this is to not electrocute ourselves and burn our house down. So we're going to find the ribbed one. That is going to be this one right here. And what you're going to want to do is create a little loop and go to the neutral screw. Unscrew it a little bit and loop it around so it goes underneath. Now you want it to run about three quarters of the way around. Now you also want to loop it around counterclockwise here. That way when you tighten the screw, it's not pulling out. So then you tighten the screw up. Now you're going to do the same thing with the other side. We're going to create a little loop here. And you're just going to stick it in. And this is basically when you're wiring anything. It could be an outlet, a light switch, a lamp. You want to run the cord around counterclockwise. That way, since you're tightening it, or I'm sorry, run it around clockwise. Ignore what I just said, run it around clockwise. Since you're tightening it clockwise, you want to be able to not pull it out. So now we are wired in. At this point, if I wanted to, I'm not going to because it's probably not a good idea, but I could plug it in and it would probably work. Now we're going to want to put this little cardboard piece on and then push it in, tuck everything inside. I think my wires are a little bit too long, but we're tucked inside. And then this piece, you push it on. There we go, there we go. You push it until you hear the click. You do wanna keep that cardboard piece on, that's important, it's an insulator. Now at this point, we're wired in place. That's how we're gonna turn it on and off. Now it's time to reattach the base. So now the base, hopefully you wired it through all of these pieces. We got some extra slack that we're going to pull out. A whole bunch of extra slack here. And then this will slide on there. And this will slide on here. Now, one thing that isn't a bad idea, and this would have been an earlier step, but if you have space inside the lamp base above this, tie another knot. See, the reason for the knot is when we're pulling on this, it's not going to pull on the actual screwed on connections there. It's gonna pull on the knot. Because obviously if you pull on this, and it could be now when I'm putting it together, or it could be 10 years from now, maybe I trip over it at home when it's plugged in, or I grab the lamp and rip it out of the wall. It could disconnect that. I mean, you could have bare wires touching this metal thing. That's not a good idea. So back over here, we're gonna pull this the rest of the way through. And then we're just standing this up and screwing it on. Now it's actually threaded down here. That's why there isn't a nut on the bottom. And all we're doing is spinning it. You can't see the spinning because what's actually spinning is the pipe inside. But if we come up here, 
you can see I'm spinning it into place. So we'll just do this the rest of the way. So it's all held together. And we are all tightened and ready to go now. It's worth note, some lamps, that's just gonna sit on there. And there will actually be a nut on the bottom that you'll tighten. In this particular case, the whole stem is threaded. So we're spinning the whole thing. So now, that's how we turn it on and off. Let's get a bulb in it and plug it in. We got the bulb in, we're all plugged in. Worth note, there's a lot of cord here. What I could have done was cut some of the cord off before we wired it in here. But, there we go. Now this is a cool, I'm really glad I didn't go with the larger bulb. You can't really see the detail on the bulb. There, now you can kind of see it. Doesn't pick up that great on the camera, but it's nice and bright. It looks cool. And the gold wire actually is well hidden in there. I almost like that better than this ugly brown wire. If you remember, this is what ran through it. So anyways, we are good to go. It's completely rewired. I'm glad I went with the small bulb for two reasons, actually. Number one, because this, you know, the bigger bulb is really gonna take away from the look of the lamp. And that's what I mentioned before, but also this would be hard to get to. And I do like that I did the pull chain because it kind of adds to the look of it. So overall, yes, I wish this brass was a little more aged like that, but I don't think you're gonna find that. We could always paint it up a little bit to make it look a little more aged, but I'm not gonna do that. Overall, I think it looks really cool. So now we've got a probably 1950s lamp that 2168, $21.68 later is completely modernized and safe. And half that was the $10 light bulb. Keep that in mind. So if you are reselling these things, it doesn't take much. This one was a little more complicated. Some, it might take you two minutes to come through and redo this. Now I just need to clean up this mess on the floor. But, I mean, look how easy that was. You just turned a $5 lamp into a $200 lamp with very little work. Now, one thing, this comes out on the front, but because it's completely open on the bottom, I can point it out in any direction. There's some rust on here, but you're not really gonna see this down here. And it's still in nice shape up here. Of course, if I wanted to, before I wired it all up, I could have sandblasted it and painted it or did something like that. But that's a little more than I'm willing to put into this. I think it turned out really nice and I'm happy with it. So that's how you do it. If you're trying to rewire a lamp for yourself, like I said, this will go in my house. Or if you're a reseller and you want to rewire a lamp to sell it for more money, this is how you do it. And it's definitely, you know, a lot of people don't realize how simple it is to rewire a lamp. So you can kind of pitch that as a huge value, completely rewired. People expect that to be more. I don't know if you can see this, but on my, on my phone here, I see right here, kind of a reflection of the light. I don't know if it's gonna show up on the video or if it's just on my phone. Anyways, so that is how you replace a lamp wiring and we completely replaced everything, the socket and the wiring, because, well, there was no socket on the other one, really. And this is gonna get recycled. Another nice little bonus. This, and then these couple of little small pieces here. This would have been, um, where did my little baggie go? Well, anyways, the little coupler so you can rotate it. This spring would have been the piece that holds it in place. So very little going in the landfill here. And it looks so nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.